Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our SDL series. In this lesson, I'm going to be showing you how to use the Simple Direct Media Player Toolkit to create this effect right here on parallax scrolling. Now, what this effect is, is it basically creates an illusion of depth by using multiple images that scroll from left to right, and we have different layers. The layers that are closer to us move quicker than the layers that are further away. And this is what causes this illusion and this sort of faked 3D or 2.5D effect. So with that said, let me go ahead and show you a few more examples, and then we'll go ahead and dive into the code and creating the artwork for this effect. So I'm going to go ahead and just bring you briefly to the Wikipedia page because it's, I think it's useful if you want some background reading here. You can see another nice example here on the top right. And again, as I mentioned, the basic idea is you have the background images moving past the camera more slowly than the foreground images. And that's what creates this sort of faked effect. And you can see there's been a plethora of games that have used this effect and they still use it today. In fact, it's just a very popular effect or technique to use. So we want to add this to our tool belt. I think you could also get some nice inspiration if you go onto Google Images and just search for parallax scrolling in 2D, go down to images, click on GIF, and you'll find a bunch of animated examples here that might be quite nice or give you some inspiration as for as creating this effect. Now, with that said, I want to go ahead and just back up a moment here and highlight how exactly this effect's being created. This is what we're going to create, and I'll show you how to make the artwork in a moment. So the basic idea is we're going to need two copies of an image here. So if this is our SDL window, and I'll just go ahead and uh, draw it uh, here. Let me just make a small little window here. And so that's the uh, SDL window. And of course, you can recreate this effect in many other languages or toolkits if you need. But the basic idea is I have one copy of my image, however large it is. And usually I'm making it the size of the window just for simplicity, though really need not be. It just merely needs to be the width. And let's say I have some object here, like a cloud. I'm going to draw it in green just so you can highlight it uh, and see it. But this is the copy or the first version of this image. And it's just scrolling left to right here. And then I'll have a duplicate of that cloud here, which will be the second image. And I'll go ahead and draw it in here. So as this image, number one, moves out of the screen, image number two, starts moving, and then we just reposition image one back to the start here. So it'll eventually go back here with the cloud, and it'll give this sort of infinite scrolling effect. Now, if I do this with enough other images in layers, say if I have some rolling hills or something that are also going to be here in their own image, then you can see how this effect is created. So that's the basic idea. Now, with that said, let me go ahead and show you a few things that are important when actually creating this artwork here. Meaning that when I'm actually creating the uh, road here or the hills, it is sort of important for me to line things up. So I'll go ahead and show you that quickly in GIMP and then we'll resume. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the GIMP program to just quickly draw a few shapes. Here's some clouds. You'll notice that the background's pink here and that's the color that I'm gonna use for transparency. So anything that's in that bright sort of pinkish magenta color is gonna be ignored in STL. So for my next layer, I'm gonna go ahead and create a foreground layer that's gonna consist of our roads and some of the hills here in this layer. Now notice that I'm trying to straighten the line out because that's gonna be important for the continuity between each of these images as they scroll. So it's important on the vertical Y values to line up where the mountains are and the grass, for instance. And again, I'm gonna repeat this process with the mountains using the shift key in GIMP to quickly create that straight line. And now I'm just gonna quickly create some mountains here, simple enough. The art doesn't have to be perfect, but it's great for just testing out the effect and getting something that can work. I'm sure you can find better or create better than this, but it'll work for our tutorial. All right, so I hope you enjoyed seeing how some of the art was created. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the SDL2 code needed to create this effect. And I'm also gonna go ahead and show you something towards the end, so make sure you stick around for that on SDL3 that might be more useful. All right, so as far as this code goes, it's pretty standard stuff to what we've been using. So let me go ahead and just make this window a little bit bigger here so you can hopefully read more of the code here. Let's increase the font. And I just wanna walk you through this example. If you're able to texture a rectangular image, that's really all you need for this effect. So you can go ahead to some of the earlier videos in this playlist if you need, but otherwise you've got all you need for this effect. You just have to be organized, so I'll show you that. So for this code, we'll go ahead and 
do our standard, create the window, initialize SDL here, create our window, create our render. And I'm paying a little bit of attention here to what the actual window size is. It's 640 by 480. Again, you might want to have some abstraction here uh, to create the window here. And if folks are really interested in this, I can create another lesson on it, but I think you'll uh, be good um, to go here. Uh, meaning that you can um, just for the sake of getting this effect to work, just go ahead and pick some number like 640 pixels wide by 480 pixels high. All right, and then here's the important part for creating the actual parallax effect. I'm going to create four different surfaces here, and that just means I'm loading in bitmap data. So from the mountains, hills, clouds, and road images, which I showed you how to make, I'm just populating those into a surface. And then I'm going to create my texture from each of those surfaces. Now, again, one of the important parts of this effect is for transparency. So for instance, for the clouds, if I actually go ahead and uh, run this again, and from the little uh, tutorial I showed you on making the art, I am setting the color key to this sort of pink uh, magenta color here to ignore those pixels. And then we can have our transparent cloud. So that's just how this is being uh, created. And that's a set color key. Again, there's a video on this playlist if you need to see how that is done here uh, in more detail. All right. But now that I have our textures, I can actually free each of the surfaces because the actual image data has been uploaded to the GPU. And now what I'm going to do is create essentially two rectangles for each of the textures that I have. So mountain and mountain two, for instance. And again, all that is doing is setting up in our STL program here. Uh, this would be, for instance, the first mountain image and the second mountain image that's going to scroll on by. And you'll see this in the logic of the code in a moment here as I continue to show you. So I'm going to do this again for the hills, again, having two copies, setting carefully their widths and height again to my window height and just offsetting their starting position. So in each of these cases, you're going to see the X position say at zero for the first image and negative 639 for the second. So again, what that's doing is setting up. I'll just draw a small uh, window here so you can see it. Um, the first image is overlapping perfectly with our window. And then the second image is sort of queued up here behind. And as this image scrolls out, this next image scrolls in. And that's the idea here for the setup. OK, so let's go ahead and continue uh, going through our code. So I do that for the clouds and the road. And then now I have my main SDL loop here. That's just an infinite loop that's running. Handle any events you want, handle any updating. And then we actually do our drawing here with our renderer. I clear it so that we don't have anything in our window. I set a delay here, just a little cheat to slow down my program, but you can look at other lessons in the series if you want to do frame independent movement or frame cap your simulation, that's fine. And then here's the important part. So I'll make this a little bit bigger here where I am actually scrolling the textures and increasing again their X position uh, by one, two in the case of the hills, the clouds also two and the road by four. So again, the closer the object is to the actual user or what they would perceive in the foreground, I'm moving that piece of our program faster. So again, just to demonstrate that uh, by running the program here, you'll notice that the road is scrolling at twice the rate as the hills here. Now I do have the clouds moving the same speed as um, the actual hills here. So you could change that and get a, a effect that you want. Now I'll, I'll give a little caveat on that uh, in a moment um, for how to improve this effect even more with something like SDL three, which is coming soon. Uh, but that's the basic idea. So again, not too complex code here. And then again, the idea is, well, when one image goes out of bounds, so exceeds the window width, then you just go ahead and set it to the start position, negative 639. OK, because as one texture is scrolling in, uh, the other texture is going to be scrolling out. So you'll see this code repeated for clouds, mountains, hills and the road. And then the important part here, which I've noted, is to make sure that when you're actually drawing things, you have to follow the painter's algorithm. So again, what does that exactly mean here? Well, again, if I want uh, the clouds to be in front of, say, a mountain backdrop here, and I'm just sort of making this up <laughs> in this image here, I need to make sure that I draw the mountain first and then the clouds so that the clouds draw on top of it. That is one thing that I did mess up while I was doing this, uh, but now you can see my draw order. Again, the mountains, which would be in the very, very back, then would be covered by the hills, then the clouds, uh, and then ultimately the road is the closest thing to our user. 
And now I can actually run this again and you can see the uh, desired effect here once again here. Now, again, um, pretty simple effect. You can have as many layers as you want, um, but you do have to just be a little bit careful on the draw order and trying to scroll things at different speeds so that you actually create this illusion. All right, so the rest of this code here, if you just want to see it, is me cleaning up the window and the texture. So that's really it. Now, one thing to keep in mind here uh, that I just want you to, to alert you about is rectangles are storing integer values. So I am uh, incrementing, excuse me, by two here or four or one, right? They have to be integer numbers here. And I could go in the opposite direction if I wanted and create some sort of uh, interesting effects that way. Um, but that's the basic idea. And you might want to increment these values based off of the player's movement speed, for instance, rather than just having them scrolling. Uh, so again, as a multiple of you know the character's velocity or how much they've moved in the world. Um, that would be the, the ideal way to sort of use this effect. Um, but we don't have quite decimal precision. So doing, say, 1.5 uh, here isn't possible right now. Um, you could sort of accumulate this value and convert it to an integer. And that would be okay. Um, but something just to keep in mind, if you search for uh, SDL3 on the homepage, there is going to be a rectangle uh, float that you can actually use. So that will fix some of these issues. Uh, because again, you want perfect continuity here um, between uh, each of these windows here so you don't get a seam in between each of the images. So that's just something to uh, keep an eye on. All right, folks, so with that said, I'll go ahead and just run this uh, effect one more time here so you can see it. Um, I think it's quite nice. And it's something that uh, I've always liked creating. I think it's a really good style or a trick to use in platformer type games or uh, 2D shooters. So I hope you can go ahead and just enjoy these. If you enjoyed this lesson, if you're enjoying the SDL series, make sure to comment below. Maybe there's other tips or tricks or effects that you'd like to learn about. And I really enjoy kind of going back and learning some of these uh, and implementing them just to see how, you know, old school games did these effects. Anyways, with that said, folks, thanks for your time and attention. Hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next one.